Hey all, here are OS Reviews. This is an unboxing and just first look at the Koshi Care P01 headband. It's one of the stranger gadgets that I've stumbled across this year. My first reaction was, what exactly is this? So I wanted to briefly explore in this video. The premise of this headset is it's supposed to use some form of gamma light rays to supposedly combat reduced mental capacity, delay the offset of Alzheimer's. Of course, medical studies will probably require a longer period of time to validate whether this is just pseudoscience because, as the saying goes, correlation isn't always causation, but only time will tell whether it's something that is actually useful or not. But according to this article published in Tokyo, Japan, this claims to be a non-invasive way to, again, reduce neurodegeneration by blasting 40 hertz gamma light rays that is compared to invasive treatments, which would require maybe supplements for health purposes compared to something that you're just simply wearing, for example. And some of the claims include after repeated usage to relieve also stress as well as improve your concentration. So there are some other smart health products that we've seen in the past, including wearables like the Apollo Nair that are trying to use haptic vibrations to activate the parasympathetic nervous system and getting you to calm down. This headset also has haptic vibration motors, but it combines that with some of those light rays to supposedly also improve some of these KPIs that they're tracking. But again, whether or not this is a large enough sample size is yet to be determined, but they're claiming that the concept is at least backed by some scientific studies. It requires some conditioning though of wearing the headset daily for around 15 minutes, and they claim to get some of those benefits over the long term, such as improved quote-unquote memory recall, learning, and creativity. And in certain studies, it seems like participants have shown an improvement in the accuracy of the in-back working memory task compared to a control group that didn't wear the headset. This is kind of a technical jargon, but in-back task is a method used in psychology studies where you're presented with a series of images and then you have to answer how many images ago did you see the previous same image appear, for instance. So kind of a example of testing your working memory if you're able to retain short-term information. So it seems like these tests were done as one potential KPI to measure the effectiveness of a headband like this. But again, of course, more clinical studies and validation will probably be required since there are some pretty lofty claims from the advertising that I wouldn't be 100% confident in, although some of these smaller, short-term benefits perhaps can be derived from a couple of these studies that they've done. So here's another example of a in-back task. This is an auditory instance where it's reading back the letters one at a time, and the participant needs to tell you previously when did they see that letter appear or image appear, something like that. And of course, as N increases, if there are more non-related elements stacked in between, it will test your memory more and more, almost like a game. And they claim that the power density of the lights in here should be safe, relatively cool in terms of temperature. So they claim that by using these gamma rays, it's trying to stimulate certain neurons in your brain that will enhance, I guess, oxygen intake, and that might supposedly allow you to remember things for a little bit longer, concentrate longer with less tiredness. So some of the maybe chemical processes at a fundamental level might be based on research. But again, whether or not it actually translates to real world usage, I think depends on many factors, including the strength of the light, whether or not you're actually using the headband continuously for a long enough period of time, how early should you start? All of these are questions that are much harder to answer since our bodies and conditions will vary as well. But anyways, kind of interesting as a concept. And here's another research paper that is apparently supporting the 40 kilohertz light for brain health that was published by the National Library of Medicine. And to their credit, there are other companies experimenting with a similar concept. So here's one from Wired, not produced by Koshi Care, but another headset that claims to, again, treat Alzheimer's with light and sound instead. So again, another non-invasive approach that offers perhaps a similar concept. So this is a space where there are surprisingly a couple of options cropping up, and it's not just the only one that appear out of nowhere. Some other studies have even looked at the effect of this gamma light ray waveform on the impact of sleep and found some, I guess, positive impacts on getting more restful sleep, feasibility, trial studies, so on and so forth. So there are, again, pieces or fragments of the concept that might be true to some extent, and although I wouldn't really expect miracles out of it, perhaps after longer-term use you can still find some improvements as part of the growing slew of neuroscience-backed 
tech products, including something called the Muse 2 is another example. It works in a slightly different way though, but this one is using EEG sensors to track your brainwave activity. It's also a tool used in more professional neuroscience and psychology researches as well. So it can detect if your mind is really distractive, active, neutral, calm, or restful as another example of a product used for meditation. So again, some of the claims on paper with this one, I do think their advertising perhaps shouldn't be so optimistic, but at least it is in a category or space where we do have a couple of those alternatives cropping up. So again, for difficulty concentrating, memory issues perhaps caused by brain fog, in addition to poor sleep quality, those could all be some potential use cases for something like this based on their studies. And in terms of a full charge, it will last for around 150 minutes of use or roughly 10 sessions, each session lasting around 15 minutes automatically. Here are the technical specs of the headset as well in terms of weight around 228 grams, kind of like VR goggles in that sense with a 3,400 milliamp hour capacity battery inside. This is the wavelength of those gamma rays, 1,064 nanometers. A final render here also shows, again, it's in contact with kind of the front of your brain. So this is the region that is in contact with those rays and might be, again, helping improve some of those memory recall capabilities while the device is in use. I'll also point out that it's also not the first time I've heard of kind of a light type treatment or therapy of some sort because in the past I've heard of kind of red light or blue light therapy so you can apply it on a region of your skin that might be kind of sore or there are even masks available believe it or not that uses red light or blue light to kill bacteria on the skin treating conditions like acne so it looks kind of horrifying, almost like a Halloween costume, but those acne treatment, heat treatment, therapy devices is one example of a light therapy product that I have seen in the past, which has been proven to be actually useful for, again, killing some of the skin bacteria. But this might be a little different because, again, the actual rays have to penetrate through your skin. It's not just the surface of your face that you're disinfecting with a light, for example. So whether or not those wavelengths are actually proven to be effective enough in passing through, that is perhaps a bigger question. But despite some of those success stories, we still have to be cautious because if something sounds too good to be true, there is still some risk associated. For example, one product that I recall being popular in the 2000s, early 2010s, were these magnetic bracelets, sometimes described as power or energy health bracelets, and they claim to have all types of health benefits using a small magnetic force field on your wrist to relieve potential wrist pain and even improve your health as well as mood. But research later proved that these health bracelets, aka magnetic bracelets, were pretty much just placebo effect instead of being medically proven to be effective. So that is one cautionary example. So while being receptive of the possibility of emerging technologies that can improve our lifestyles and giving things a chance, we should still be wearing our Cynics hat to some extent. Interestingly, it seems like this company is based in Japan, or at least their offices are, so that is why we saw that article from Tokyo earlier. And inside here we have just the item itself, very kooky gadget regardless. And underneath here we have some accessories inclusive of a USB Type-C charging cable, it takes about two hours to recharge. There is a carrying bag as well as a quick start guide that just tells you Things that are beneficial to health often are because they are effective when persisted, not persisted because they are effective. So that's kind of a spin on the correlation causation argument that we touched on earlier in this video. But in this case, telling you to be a bit patient and wear it for longer durations before you start to see some of the potential effects. So it looks like there's an LED light ring that will turn green when it's in process, blue is standby, and red is charging. The actual band itself isn't that heavy, it's kind of a glossy plastic, feeling decent, a power key on the front, and then on the side here we have the Type-C for charging, gamma rays coming out from this section, and it's also coated with some soft touch rubber, so as you're wearing the headset it's not going to feel too uncomfortable on your forehead. And on this side there's also a ambient light sensor, a proximity light sensor. So if you're removing the headset, it will pause the session automatically and then only resume when you put it back onto your head. So there is a auto play and pause function basically. And that is mostly it. The headband size can also be adjusted. Not bad in terms of general comfort, I would say, in my quick hands-on with it so far. That being said, this is missing any type of companion app support, so it definitely is a very much first-generation type product. Having an app would allow you to control maybe the duration of the session if you wanted to increase or decrease the length, possibly altering the intensity as well. And although this model is very much centered on just using those 
wavelengths plus some haptic vibrations, if they could maybe consider adding in a few more tangible senses, including maybe smell, helping you relax with something like lavender, in addition to, again, vision, if they're able to use some type of flashing lights, plus perhaps sound as well, if playing back some relaxing soundscapes to set the mood, Combining all of these elements together could possibly make it seem a little bit more comprehensive and multi-sensory that could possibly improve the effectiveness for more people as well. And if they have those aspects, then you would probably want to control those things more directly using an app. But as it is, it is just a standalone unit. Again, tap and hold on here for a few seconds just to turn it on, and that is mostly it. You hear a buzz, and then once the sensor here has been covered up, you can tell it turns green, and the treatment here is in progress. Very interestingly, while the treatment is occurring, you can't really see anything with your eyes, and there seems to be some type of fan inside as well, as you can kind of hear. So it's trying to cool it down to prevent any overheating while the treatment is in progress, which at least is a nice touch, I suppose, plus some of those haptics there. But there are no, again, speaker, so there's no music playing back, nor are there even any voice prompts that tells you the session is over. You just get a buzz, and then you can take it off. At least it is relatively clean looking, and it's not overly bulky. It's just trying to use the specific frequency to activate some of the neurons uh, inside of your brain. So that is the part that kind of relies on you maybe believing in it, in part that it's occurring because you can't really see it with your eyes. But even if there is some degree of placebo effect happening here, I guess if you're purchasing something like this and you really want to improve your memory recall, you're probably working more consciously at improving that aspect anyways by spending more time kind of sitting down as well as testing yourself on these memory tasks. You are already perhaps stretching some of those muscles a little bit more compared to someone that's not doing any of these tasks at all. So that is the part where whether it's all caused by the headband remains maybe a bigger question. And and that's also where I think if they could add in a few extra sensors, uh, for instance, a EEG sensor, just like the Muse, for instance, that can also track your brain activity, you can at least know if the neurons are activating a little bit faster as a quantitative metric that you're able to see and perhaps believe in a little bit more. Obviously, you could still purchase something like a Muse headband yourself for tracking that metric, but that would require an additional payment. So if they could integrate it into one unit, that's why I think it could just become a little bit more compelling. Nonetheless, in my very limited hands-on and just trial using it with just a session or two so far, I will say that wearing it did make me feel quite calm because of the gentle white noise there. Again, the comfort wasn't bad, and after the session, I was able to feel just a little bit more energetic and restful compared to before the session. But then again, I was basically resting for around 10 to 15 minutes as well. And for bigger improvements in some of those memory tasks, you probably have to train as well as use it repeatedly for longer stretches of time. But nonetheless, it is quite a kooky concept, I have to say, as part of this more evolving category of health-conscious based gadgets. And this is just something that seems like it stepped out of a science fiction novel, but here we have it in front of us as a very early adopter type of item, I would say. So at this stage, it is quite a niche concept as well, particularly considering the price point, which I think definitely needs to be lower for it to be more accessible, as well as something that people might be willing to pick up and just try. But folks, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of something like this? And would you ever consider trying something like this at one point? So that has been the Kushi Care P01 from Japan. That is a brain NIR photon or gamma ray headband.